Hi guys, good morning, this is Dan. Welcome to Angle Guys. This is the forecast for the week of uh, October 4th, Sunday, October 4th, through Saturday the 10th of October. This is a timeless message, so it is available to you whenever you need it. If you watch it on a date that doesn't fall within these dates, that's completely acceptable. Uh, it may still have a message for you. You might be in alignment with it more so in the time that you watch it versus the time that it was created. So keeping that in mind, please feel free to enjoy it in however you see fit. If things don't necessarily make sense or it doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. It just means that you might be working on something different at this time and there's nothing wrong. If you watch this and choose to make decisions in your day-to-day -day life from this reading, please know that that is your responsibility and, um, you know, always sort of, you know, kind of take what you need and leave the rest, so to speak. So let's see what's going on. It'll be interesting to do weeklies with Oracle decks. It'll be sort of interesting. So let's see. This is the first part of the week. All right. So to me, the first part of the week, Toad is an interesting um, uh animal, right? It's not necessarily a frog, which frog to me represents cleansing. Toad, on the other hand, toad is sort of like kind of almost a magical creature. <laughs> and the reason why I think of that is because we're working with, first off, it's October. We're also working with the witch's oracle, right? So, you know, you know, they have those like spells like eye of newt and, and you know, sweat of toad or <laughs> whatever. Um, toad to me is associated with sort of magic in the sense of like in witches recipes, but also in like fairy tales, right? You know, there's always the, the princess kissing the toad and it, him turning into a prince. So I feel like when I'm looking at this card and it's not much to go on because this is an oracle deck, which is sort of singular words and items in a large, a large part of the deck. I feel like this week could feel a little bit, um, off to a sluggish start or not quite right, right? It may not appear as good as it seems, but I want to speak to the idea that there is magic within this and there is power within this, right? What maybe appears to be dismal, um, not working, uh, you know, um, lackluster maybe, or appears to be sort of toad-ish, <laughs> may transform at some point throughout this week don't sort of like the kind of the message that I'm getting from this card is don't like judge a book by its cover or don't take things for granted that there could be um, uh, uh, opportunities here that we don't necessarily see. We might be thinking or looking at things from a very surface level or um, uh, a practical level and we're not necessarily seeing what other possibilities lie beneath. The other thing about toad that's interesting too is that a lot of toads, you know, they're relatively harmless animals, although some of them can be quite poisonous, right? And that's how they sort of protect themselves by their skin, by the sort of uh, things that they secrete from their skin. And so what I mean from that is, is sort of like, or where I want to take this is that even though things may not appear great on the surface, we're going to be okay, right? Um, things might not be as lackluster, but we're sort of protected. We can take care of ourselves and we can work our way through the early part of this week. Trust that there's some sort of, um, like magic involved is kind of what I'm saying, I'm feeling is this, there's opportunity for possible transformation, for surprise. And, and I'm, I'm, I don't know what the midweek card is, but we'll, it'll be interesting to see what that midweek card is or the latter, the end week card. But I kind of feel like this what appears to be something that we don't want in the beginning of the week might actually turn into something of benefit towards the mid or end of the week or maybe even the week following let's see what the next card is okay like they're fighting okay praying mantis hey dude i don't know much about praying mantises i know that they're harmless animals um like that they don't hurt anything, they're bug eaters, and they actually are good cleaners. They're kind of spooky looking, they're a little bit foreign to me, um, and sort of alienistic looking, it's scarier than they seem. Does that make sense? So in some ways we might not quite understand uh, um, what's going on around us, how to operate within the situation. It might seem 
foreign to us, uh, you know, in dealings with others or, you know, in dealings in our world, it might feel a little bit um, kind of weird. This is a strange animal for me or an insect for me because I don't really know much about praying ant mantis to kind of draw upon inspiration. I'm, let me just look at this. It's funny too, because they almost look like they're at odds in a way. <laughs> like they're getting ready to duke it out. Um, let me look at the third card, just because I don't... Okay, and then we get Anna Akhmatova, which is Endurance. And I don't, even, I don't even think we've seen Anna Akhmatova. We're going to have to read about who she is. Okay, what I'm going to say about this is I get a feeling, and this is going to sound weird, but just roll with me about this. I feel like this is our physical, this is our spiritual, or our sort of um, higher self in a way, and the two are at odds, right? We might be looking at something through the ego or through the physical or something that we've been given this week or something that we're experiencing that, this week that seems like a toad of a situation where we're like, Ugh, I don't really want to deal with this. This is a pain in the ass. What did I, what did I sign up for? But the thing is, is that the toad has power and magic in it, right? It has the ability to sort of transform. Like if we kiss enough toads, a prince will come kind of thing. So an opportunity could come out of this. We don't quite see that opportunity. Midweek, this praying mantis to me feels like we're going to need to maybe explore the more, uh, 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 what's the word? Like, I don't want to say alien, but kind of in a way alien aspects of our higher self, um, uh, look at things from a more um, uh, higher perspective, po quite possibly, to see sort of the things that Toad is offering us, even though they may not seem great at first. So like, if we find ourselves frustrated, annoyed with others, um, feeling like there's blocks or things in the way in the early part of the week, that's okay. It's going to stretch us, right, to create this sort of praying mantis energy where I feel like we need to kind of look at things from a different perspective, maybe a perspective that we haven't necessarily utilized before. It's a uh, part of us that's maybe not quite familiar. And these two things will be at odds, right? They do feel like they're at odds with me. Like this feels like sort of like, oh shit, I gotta deal with this, whatever it may be for you, right? You have to apply it into your life, but it's annoying. But if we rise to the occasion, we sort of kind of get ourselves into this state of, you know, um, praying mantis because ultimately a praying mantis to me is a peaceful animal it's not deadly it's not going to like kill you and it's not out to kill anybody else right it may have to um kind of it, it's able to protect itself if it needs to and it's sort of maybe scary looking but it's not really quite as scary or as foreign as it looks right and to me this feels like exploring areas of ourselves that might be foreign or um you know extending ourselves in ways that we're not super familiar with so that we can better get an understanding and a grasp of what's going on with these situations that we don't necessarily like. It's a, kind of like adapting, right? Which brings us to Anna Akhmatova, right? Which to me is this idea of endurance, right? And I don't mean endurance in a bad way, but I feel like to endure, we must like sort of change, we must transform, we might have to sort of, um, this week, we might have to adapt to our situations and what our situations are giving us. And that's the idea that I get from Anna Ak Akhmatova is that even though the card itself appears a little bit dark, like it could be things that maybe are, at, at first glance, we don't really want them, right? We're like, oh shit, I don't want this to happen is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. But we need to remember that we're protected. That's what this bird is over her. And also I feel like this is like sort of the praying mantis and the toad, these two aspects of these little people down here. We'll read her story to see what they represent. But to me, it's kind of like bringing those two together the egoic or the physical and what we're experiencing and disgruntled with, with maybe stretching ourselves um, uh, with this praying mantis energy to kind of um, uh, adapt, better understand, not allow it to bother us so much, and make the most of sort of a situation that may not appear on the surface as great as it should be. Does that make sense? The endurance aspect in it says to me that like, Anna Akhmatova gives us the power by week's end to kind of see our way through this situation without uh, too many um, uh, hindrances. Again, we have this egg she's holding in her hand, like I just noticed that, similar to Flannery O'Connor yesterday. This egg, though, is, is, is whole, 
right? It's no longer cracked like Flannery's, right? So we might be seeing ourselves as stronger. That's also the endurance aspect, still yet fragile, still yet needing care, still yet needing sort of to be carried or, or protected. But we also are um, uh, uh, doing that with maybe a little less delicacy or a little bit more self-assuredness, a little bit more endurance, a little bit more capability and feeling okay with that. Understanding hopefully that we are protected, that we are taking care of ourselves and our own. These two beings down here, although they could represent sort of as the conflict between this, what I see is this conflict between the frog and the praying mantis, they could also be like sort of annoying people in our life. <laughs> annoying people or situations in our life that are maybe falling to the wayside through our own endurance of not like uh, giving in or not um, engaging with them, not giving them the attention, uh, those things could be being put to rest or being laid to rest, right? Um, and I like that too. I think that that endurance uh, speaks to our strength, speaks to our longevity, speaks to our ability to sort of uh, take care of ourselves in a very big way towards the end of the week and see ourselves through this week in a positive way. This week to me, looking at these cards, feels like there's an adjustment that's taking place. Is everything going to be perfect this week or, you know, blissful? Not necessarily. There's going to be things like that toad and Anna Akratova that says to me that, um, you know, we might have to extend ourselves, work through uh, seeing things maybe in a different light or integrating, you know, into situations in a different way than we're normally used to. We can't just go barreling in and, and duking it out, so to speak. But we will be able to do that if we sort of challenge ourselves and kind of adapt like that praying mantis. So let's see what the moon card is, and then I'll read these definitions. Who knows, maybe I'm completely wrong about this reading. <laughs> let's see. That praying mantis, it's interesting reading with this on a weekly because it's just these, some of these cards are just a singular word or item, and you're like, how do I, where does this fit? So I have to kind of, question that space in my head of like, okay, what is this mean? All right, so let's see here. And for our moon card, we have 43, which is seven, right? Which is a choice or a change. And I'm gonna say this right out of the gate. This is the unexpected, this is the blue moon. Okay, 43, which is a seven. Now, what I like about this is we have a lot of dualities here. We have this frog fighting the praying mantis. We have these two little bodies down here. We also have these two ladies sort of coming together during the week or towards week's end, right? I think this is also these bodies lying at rest. It might be the fighting between the frog and the mantis coming to an end through our own endurance and our own faith within ourselves, seeing ourselves through whatever this unexpected situation is. But this is also the unexpected, right? There could be shifts and changes for us, things that we didn't otherwise see. You know, this frog that might pose as like a, an annoyance in the beginning of the week may open up a path for us to then uh, sort of have to adapt to, change with, become like the praying mantis so that we can move down it. Does that make sense? And that endurance that we see in Anna Akhmetova kind of gives us that faith, that resilience, that belief that we can do this on our own. And we make that choice to do it. That's the 43 or the seven. Seven is always like making a conscious choice. It's not always the most comfortable of choice, right? Making choices sometimes take feel risky. They can feel scary. It's like committing to something that we maybe don't know the outcome for. But I believe that, I, and what I love about the visual of this card is that there's a sort of a door or a portal, an opportunity, something opening up either throughout the week or leading into the following weeks that um, will bring about good things, right? That will bring about new changes, that will bring about new opportunities. It also sort of sews us together. I feel like these two women are sort of rejoining. If this is uh, you rejoining with somebody outside of yourself, this could also be you rejoining like with your own, you know, higher self or or your own sort of desires and, and moving forward towards whatever's out there for you, right? But we need to be strong and we need to endure that. We need to sort of adapt and change to that. We need to embrace all aspects of that. This frog, this toad could represent some, you know, jerk butt that we have to deal with in day life. And that's having to be like the praying mantis where we're not really violent towards them, but we have to maybe extend ourselves in ways that aren't normally our, our normal go-to answer, right? Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Let me read these cards to you guys and see if I'm completely off. 
Jesus. All right, I'm so goofy. Let me see here. So we're gonna go to Toad first. Toad is humor, the grotesque, and joy. So that's nice, humor and joy. I'll take that any day. But I get a feeling that Toad to me speaks to this idea that we have a situation that may not appear as great as it is. Does that make sense? I would really want to stress that because that's definitely the feeling that I'm getting from Toad is that it's like, it's a, it looks like a toad on the outside, but when you kiss it or when you interact with it in the right way, boom, there's an opportunity to come closer and unexpected, you know, maybe door or opportunity pops up. It's within us, but we have to make that choice, right, to operate that way. Now, let's see what Praying Mantis is. Praying Mantis is wit, manipulation, and fun. Now, I like that Toad is about humor and joy and Praying Mantis is about wit and fun, right? Those are positives, right? I think that... Again, I still feel like, and it says manipulation in, in Praying Mantis, to me, I feel like that is us extending ourselves in ways that we haven't otherwise known about ourselves. Does that make sense? Like, and also the idea of it being a praying mantis, praying takes me to this place of spirit, right? So it's sort of like, there's this aspect within ourselves that might, if we extend ourselves, uh, try and operate in a different way with a situation that may appear as though it's a toad in the early part of the week. In the midweek, if we start to find maybe a more uh, peaceful way to interact with that, we do open ourselves up to this unexpected, right? To this sort of coming together that I see that it's this choice that we have to actively pursue and choose. Now, let's see Anna Akhmatova because she is totally new to us. What is she up to? This woman. Anna, where are you, girl? She not there. Why am I not seeing her? With my gun. Anna, Anna, Anna. Oh, here she is. Okay. Staying with pain, avoiding pain, and patience. Anna Akhmatova from 1889 to 1966 was celebrated during and beyond her lifetime for her lyric, melancholy poetry. As Russia fell under Stalin, Akhmatova and her circle of artists and intellectuals were persecuted for their work. Her son was imprisoned and sent to labor camps and her husband was executed. Akhmatova's most famous poem, Requiem, is her boldest attempt at capturing the Stalinist terror. Wow, not a fun card. But we kind of see that with the darkness of the card. What I see here is I literally, and this might be her, you know, her loved ones or whatever being put to rest, which is sad and it is upsetting. I see this as sort of maybe disagreements, um, Toads versus praying mantis is also being put to rest. I also love this bird over her. To me, that's a symbol of protection. That's a symbol of we can do this. We just need to endure and continue to believe in ourselves. I also love that she follows Flannery's egg yesterday. This egg is larger, not cracked, a, more golden in color. There's an opportunity here. We're working with something here. There's a I, I feel like, I mean, to me, this egg also symbolizes this light that's coming out of this blue moon or this this doorway that we're looking at. There's an opportunity somewhere in this for each and every one of you. Some of you may actually know what this opportunity is, and some of you may have yet to have realized it. It, it could be coming to you through this, um, through this week and into next. That's the unexpected card. Now let's go to the unexpected, which is 43, which is blue moon. The unexpected. No matter how well you plan, there is always room for the unexpected to occur. Build your resilience as rare occurrences can happen. Now, resilience to me is a lot like endurance too, right? Like rolling with the punches, dealing with it, adapting like the praying, praying mantis, that manipulation that we see in the praying mantis. Be able to pivot this week if you need to, guys. A visitor you have not seen in a long time may re-enter your life. Um, I train, trust my, in myself and in my life is the phrase for this card. In Old Farmer's Almanacs, a blue moon was described as the third full moon in a season that has four full moons. The newer and now more accepted description is that a blue moon is when there are two full moons in one calendar month. That's happening this month, guys. 
guys, we have two full moons in um, October. I do know that. So that's interesting. Either way, it is a rare occurrence and has inspired the saying, once in a blue moon, when describing an event or behavior that only happens rarely. The energy and power of the blue moon can, best, can be best taken advantage of by setting intentions on these moons of things that you really want but have never felt could happen. I refer to big wishes, the almost miracle stuff we would be both delighted and surprised about if it manifested. After setting blue moon intentions, though, don't sit there hoping it will just happen. Try to make clear, practical steps towards these big, seemingly faraway intentions and help the universe along. Some of us love surprises, some of us don't. But I don't think anyone can go through life without sometimes having the unexpected happen to them. While some professions in particular, such as the military and medicine, try to plan for everything that could go wrong, life sometimes finds a way to outsmart the most thorough of plans. This is simply life. Although it is important for us to know where, how, and why we are traveling down a particular path, we should always make room for and expect the unexpected. The companion stone or metal is Benitoite. A very rare blue gem. So, let me get the grounding stone while we're at it. I think that there, if there are some unexpected things that arrive this week, that could be that uh, toad stone too. Don't worry about that. Um, in the sense that I feel like Anna Akhmatova's endurance and the praying mantis's ability to sort of manipulate change are going to allow us to adapt as we move forward. The stone or this week is to uh, um, ground in throughout the entirety of the week and stay focused on joy. What is our joy? What brings us that joy? And how do we get to that joy? Even if we're looking at toads or situations that might feel like not fruitful, uh, joy is the answer. Also, I would see that joy would be the antithesis to Anna Akhmatova and her sadnesses, right? Not to deny those sadnesses or struggles that we've had in our past, but we also don't want to bring them into our future by sort of focusing on them or keeping them. We want to sort of lay them to rest like those two bodies at her feet, right? Letting her sadness go and moving along with that sort of bird or what appears to be a phoenix, re-rising and moving towards the unexpected. I just want to see, is there a blue moon this month? I'm just going to research this really quick. Sorry to hold you guys up, but I'm Googling it. Is there a blue moon this month? I think it might be on Halloween, guys. The next blue moon will come on October 31st, 2020. It will be called the blue moon because it will be the second of two full moons to occur in a single calendar month. We just had one in Aries, guys, at the beginning of the month. I want to say, uh, what day was it? On the first. So we're getting one at the beginning of the month and one at the end. So I'm just going to share that with you because I think that's very, very interesting. <laughs> and it's weird. These moon, these queen of the moon cards are like kind of corresponding to the different sort of moon cycles. Um, and like I said, I think that there's something that we're adapting to here or we're shifting, we're making a choice towards that could carry out all the way through this month. So keeping that in, in the forefront of your mind, choose joy over any and all else and endure, be strong and be adaptable in this week. And we will see how the cards build and what, what messages we get. And I really look forward to seeing how this week turns out for all of us because it could be quite exciting. Um, at least fun and preparatory for maybe whatever's going to happen this uh, December or this October. I will say this, both of the angel readings that I did over on the Patreon page were both extremely positive. So I'm looking forward to the month of October for some sort of uh, shift and change in everybody's perspective. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up. It's so very important. Um, and, and share it out if you'd like. I will see you guys soon. Have a great day. Bye-bye.